Introduction Good morning, teacher. Good morning, students. Today we learn plant growth and development. Who will tell me what is growth in plants? Ma'am, increase in the size of the cell and elongation in them signifies the growth of plant. Very good, Suresh. Ma'am, can we measure the growth of plants? Good question, Rahul. Yes, we can. The growth of a plant can be measured by considering various factors such as nutrients availability, water availability, oxygen, etc. One more thing I would like to tell you that there are five plant growth regulators. They are auxins, gibberellins, cytokinins, ethylene and abscisic acid. Okay. Now it's time to learn about plant growth and development. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain growth in plants, explain phases of growth, define growth rates, to know quantitative comparison of growth, explain conduction for growth, define differentiation, de-differentiation and re-differentiation. Define development, explain plant growth regulators, describe photoperiodism, describe vernalization, growth, an irreversible increase in the size and number of the cells by division and enlargement is called growth. In plants, the growth generally is indeterminate. Plants have the capacity of unlimited growth because of the presence of meristems at certain locations on their body. The cells of meristems are capable of dividing by their own. When new cells are added in the body of the plant due to the activity of meristem, it is called open form of growth. The root apical meristem and shoot apical meristem are primarily responsible for the elongation of the plant along its axis. In dicot plants, the lateral meristems, vascular cambium and core cambium are responsible for secondary growth of the plants. Growth is measurable. Growth of the plants can be measured by various factors. Increase in cell numbers, fresh weight, dry weight, size of the cell, etc. For example, watermelon cells can increase in size up to 3,50,000 times. Increase in surface area shows the growth of leaves. Phases of growth. The period of growth is divided into three phases. Meristematic, elongation and maturation. Meristematic phase. This phase has continuously dividing cells and is restricted to the apical meristems both at the root and shoot tips. In this region, the cells are rich in protoplasm, they have large nuclei. Phase of elongation The aim of this phase is enlargement of cells. Phase of maturation In this phase, cells undergo maturation to accomplish their final size, shape and structure. Growth rates The increased growth per unit time is termed as growth rate. Plants show two types of growth, arithmetic and geometric. Arithmetic growth. Only one daughter cell continues to divide while others become mature. For example, root elongating at a constant rate. Mathematically, LT is equal to L0 plus RT, where LT is equal to length at time T, L0 is equal to initial length, R is equal to growth rate. On plotting length against time, a linear curve is obtained. Geometric growth. Initial growth is slow, followed by a rapid increase in growth, followed by a phase where growth slows down. All cells, tissues and organs typically show this type of growth. Mathematically, W1 is equal to W0 into exponent RT. 
W1 is equal to final size. W0 is equal to initial size. R is equal to growth rate. T is equal to time of growth. E is equal to base of natural algorithms. Quantitative comparison of growth. Two ways to compare growth quantitatively are absolute growth rate and relative growth rate. Measurement of total growth per unit time is called absolute growth rate. An absolute increase is shown in the areas of the leaves A and B to form leaves A1 and B1. Growth of given system per unit time is called relative growth rate. In the given figure, both leaves increase by 20 cm square, but a relatively greater growth has occurred in leaf A. Conditions for growth The conditions necessary for growth are Nutrients Enough supply of nutrients is necessary for synthesis of protoplasm and act as a source of energy. Water An adequate supply of water is essential for growth. It maintains cell turgidity, which enhances growth. It also provides medium for enzymatic reactions. Oxygen It is vital for respiration and for release of energy. Temperature The most desired temperature for growth is called the optimum temperature and it ranges from 28 degrees to 30 degrees Celsius. Temperature above 45 degrees Celsius coagulates and damages the protoplasm and stops growth. Differentiation, dedifferentiation, and redifferentiation. Differentiation is the process by which meristematic cells undergo changes in the structure, shape, to perform the specific functions. For example, after the DNA synthesis of the protoderm cells, cell expansion takes place and it forms immature trichome. After that, nuclear migration takes place and then branching occurs and then it reaches to maturation stage. Dedifferentiation Dedifferentiation is the process by which the already differentiated or mature cells get back the power of division and become meristematic. Redifferentiation Redifferentiation is the process by which the meristematic cells formed by dedifferentiated cells undergo changes in the structure and shape to perform the specific function. Development Development is the series of the changes in which organisms undergo in their way from the embryonic state to maturity, that is, from lower state to higher state of organization. Plants undergo different pathways and phases of life in order to form different kinds of structure. This is termed as plasticity. If different shaped leaves present on the same shoot or on different shoots of the same plant, it is called heterophilly. For example, water crowfoot, water startwort. Assessment. Before proceeding further, let us know how much you have learnt. Drag and drop the correct option. Plant growth regulators. Characteristics. In all the plants, there occurs minute quantities of certain chemical substances that regulates growth and differentiation. These are called growth regulators. A growth regulator may be defined as an organic substance produced naturally in plants controlling growth and other functions at a site remote from its place of production in minute quantities. These are auxins, gibberellins, cytokinins, ethylene, and abscisic acid. The discovery of plant growth regulators. In the last 60 years, a large number of growth regulators have been isolated from plants. The first indication of their existence was given by Darwin, 1880, who was studying the bending of the coleoptile of a grass towards light. He found that the light falling on the tip of the grass coleoptile causes some influence. This influence is transmitted downward and causes the coleoptile to bend towards light. 
FW went isolate auxin from the tip of the coleoptiles. E. Kurosawa reported the appearance of symptoms of bacony disease of rice seedlings in uninfected rice seedlings when they were treated with sterile filtrate of fungus Gibrella fujikuroi. Gibrellic acid was later isolated from the fungus. The discovery of plant growth regulators. F. Skoog observed that callus proliferates in the tobacco plant only if, in addition to auxin, the nutrients are supplemented with extracts from the vascular tissue yeast. Skoog and Miller later identified cytokinases, a promoting active substance, and named it kinetin. Three independent workers reported three different kinds of inhibitors in plants inhibitor B, abscission 2, and dormin. Later, all the three inhibitors proved to be chemically identical and name it abscisic acid ABA. It was found that volatile substance being released from ripened oranges leads to the ripening of unripened bananas and that was confirmed by cousins. Later, this substance was found to be ethylene. Physiological effects of plant growth regulators Auxins Indole acetic acid is the main natural auxin. Indole butyric acid is also isolated from the plants. Examples of synthetic auxins are naphthalene acetic acid, 2,4-dichlorophenoxy acetic. All these auxins are very useful in agricultural field. Physiological effects of auxin on plants. Suppression of lateral buds by apical bud is called apical dominance and it is found due to transportation of auxin. Auxin stimulates cell division in cambium as well as in the primary meristems. Cell elongation is an important role played by auxins. Auxins have the differential action on shoot tip and root tip. Induce root formation at low concentrations. Prevention of leaf falls by suppressing the formation of abscission layer. Seedless formation of fruit is induced by auxins. It is also termed as parthenocarpy. Gibralins. Gibralins come under the category of plant growth regulator. Physiological effects of gibralins on plants. Gibralins cause stem elongation and leaf expansion but have no effect on roots. Gibralins promote seed germination in lettuce, cereals, etc. Plants like pea, bean, tomato pepper, cucumber, lettuce and cabbage on treatment with gibralins develop broader and elongated leaves. Gibralins break dormancy of buds and tubers. But in root tubers, the application of gibralic acid inhibits the development of root tuber. Gibralin causes parthenocarpy in tomato, apple, etc. Cytokinins Physiological effects of cytokinins on plants. In the presence of auxins, cytokinins stimulate cell division even in non meristematic tissues. In parenchyma tissue culture, mitosis is accelerated when auxins and cytokinins are present. It breaks the dormancy of many seeds and promotes their germination. It also promotes the growth of lateral birds. Cytokinins delay the process of aging in plant organs by controlling protein synthesis. It also helps in accumulation of salt in plant cells. Ethylene Physiological effects of ethylene on plants It modifies growth by inhibiting the elongation of stem and roots. It inhibits the growth of lateral buds and causes apical dominance. It accelerates the abscission of leaves, flowers and fruits by formation of abscission layer. It retards flowering in most plants but induces flowering in pineapple, mango and many other plants. It increases the number of female flowers and fruits in cucumber plants. Abscisic Acid Physiological effects of abscisic acid on plants. It acts as a stress hormone 
as it stimulates the closure of stomata. It inhibits shoot growth but does not have much effect on roots. It induces seeds to synthesize storage proteins. It also increases the tolerance of plants to different kinds of stress. It acts as antagonist to gibblins. Photoperiodism The ability of plants to respond to the relative length of day and night to which the plant is exposed is called photoperiodism. The flowering response of the angiosperms falls into three categories. Short day plants These plants initiate flowering when the length of the day becomes shorter than a certain critical length. If these plants expose for the length greater than the critical length, then they will remain vegetative. Example of short day plants are Cosmos, Dahlia, etc. Long day plants. These plants induce flowering when day length exceeds critical day length. Example of long day plants are Barley, Sugar, etc. Neutral day plants. These plants flower regardless of the exposure of light. Example of neutral day plants are sunflower, tomato, etc. Vernalization Vernalization is a process in which plants are exposed to low temperature in order to increase the flowering. Many temperate plants have the requirement of vernalization in order to initiate or accelerating the flowering process. Many plant species include some ecotypes of Arbidopsis thaliana and winter cereals such as wheat must go through period of winter. Many biennial species have the period of vernalization which can vary in temperature. Did you know? Lateral root develops from pericycle. GA3 induces the mRNA synthesis for alpha amylase enzymes in aleurone cells. Summary Let's summarize what we have learned. An irreversible increase in the size and number of cells by division and enlargement is called growth. Three phases of growth are meristematic, elongation and maturation. The increased growth per unit time is termed as growth rate. The conditions necessary for growth are nutrients, water, oxygen, temperature. Differentiation is the process by which meristematic cells undergo changes in the structure, shape to perform the specific function. Dedifferentiation is the process by which the already differentiated or mature cells get back the power of division and become meristematic. Redifferentiation is the process by which the meristematic cells formed by the dedifferentiated cells undergo changes in the structure and shape to perform the specific function. Growth regulators are auxins, gibberellins, cytokinins, ethylene and abscisic acid. The ability of the plant to respond to the relative length of day and night to which the plant is exposed is called photoperiodism. Vernalization is a process in which plants exposed to low temperature in order to increase flowering.